four years of age yesterday. <coughs> when you were growing up in Branch, you must have heard a lot of Irish songs. I love lots of song, Irish songs. All the old people that come here, they all had the Irish songs. And my mother too, she learned it. First song I learned, I learned from my mother, and that was the one I learned. The Deer Spot in Ireland. Can you give us a verse of that? There's a deer spot in Ireland I'm lying to see. Is a bird of my home and love unto me. And I left my dear mother in Ireland alone. In a neat little cottage we once called our home. John, how many Irish songs do you think you know? Well, I must, uh, I must know a hundred. I, uh, I dotted down two hundred that I could sing as uh, Irish, Scotch songs, and American songs, Canadian songs, their bland. And that's, that's what I, that's what I could remember at the time, I was knocking them down. Of course. I just, uh, I didn't write them off, but I just, down the first words of the song. John Joe, can you do a bit of your now famous recitation, The Lobster Salad? Last Saturday night I was invited by an old time friend of mine to eat his lobster salad and drink his beer and wine. We drank a toast unto each other until the hour of two. My head was a kind of shaky, my legs were shaking too. But anyhow, I'd stagger home. Think me prayers, I said. Anyway, I was paralyzed when I got into bed. I dreamt I died and went to heaven, and I met St. Peter at the gate. Found repentance for me, was just a bit too late. You go out, St. Peter says, you know you can't come in. You know you have to suffer, but an awful gluttonous of sin. Now just then I turned away to hide me grief and shame, and I saw St. Peter's clerk was by or lost about me name. The next that came was a Hebrew, a friend whom I knew well, and I listened to the story that he had to tell. A goodly father of Peter, I come to you at last, and when the first I got to you, you would let me pass. I know I kept the clothes in the store, and the clothes are good and strong, and just to show you a nobody for them, I got put a bit too long. You go out, and Peter says, and very well you know, a little use for overcoats, and the place for you got to go. Next it came with an old maid, and she was bound to have her say, and she addressed St. Peter in a peculiar sort of way. Oh, goodly father of Peter, I come to you at last, as one request I asked if you, if you would let me pass. Oh, blessed father of Peter, won't you let me in? Give me a nice little place to myself, away from those nasty men. You go out, St. Peter says, no angels have gray hairs. You got no sons nor daughters, so you cannot come in here. The next that came was Paddy, a son of all Arian's eye, and he addressed St. Peter in a loving, gracious smile. You dish yourself, St. Peter, and you're looking so nice and sweet. Open the door and let me in, so me to be seat. Oh, no, my boy, your case like the rest must be tried. You got to show a pass for it before you get inside. A hurry up, St. Peter, up or supper, I'll be late. He then took up the old slum shack and he took the side the gate. Go get that hat, St. Peter says, just now go in and just slouch. Pat walked in, shut the gate, and he locked St. Peter out. Now through the keyhole, Paddy cried, I'm skipper now, you see. I'll give up the key, St. Peter, if you'll stand out on the Now when I awoke, my head was jammed between the bed and wall. His feet were tangled in the quicks and the lobster done it off. <laughs>